Hello everyone and welcome back to China K Picks where I predict and break down fights for the upcoming UFC event. This week we have the best event ever. Get ready for UFC Vegas 40. Aspen Ladd versus Norma Dumont. Yes, I did not say this wrong. This is a main event for a fight night. I cannot wait. But before we get into these amazing picks, please hit that like and subscribe button for me and don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of my content. So I know I'm building the suspense right now, but before I get into UFC Vegas 40 predictions, I'm going to go over the picks and predictions from UFC Vegas 39, Dern vs. Rodriguez. Alright, so it looks like I went 4-1. and one. I picked Romanov, Nikolau by decision, Brown, and Rodriguez by decision all correctly. Uh, the fight that I did get wrong, I picked Mezo instead of Agapova. Um, Agapova looked really good, actually. Uh, her striking was great. She was landing a lot of left hooks and jabs. And if she keeps up the way that, that she's going, she can be a real problem for that division. And the Phil Hawes, Darren Wynn debacle of a fight that didn't happen. Yeah, that didn't count. I did pick Hawes to win, but that fight was just completely scrapped altogether. It was kind of a weird chain of events. Uh, Wynn back out because of health issues. Fight they got a replacement for him last minute. Then Hawes was like, nah, I ain't gonna fight this guy with less than 24 hours to go. So then they were scrambling for looking for a new fighter, and then I think they eventually just scrapped it. But hey, you gotta love the UFC, right? Alright guys, so get ready. Without further ado, I'm gonna stop stalling and I'm gonna get to the picks for this fantastic UFC Vegas 40 lad versus Dumont. I don't have any it's tough. Okay, so the first fight I'm going to break down is Ludovic Klein versus Nate Landwer. Klein is 17 and 3, 26 years old, 5'7 with a 72 inch reach. And Nate is coming in at 14 and 4, 33 years old, 5'9 with a 70 and a half inch reach. So all joking aside, uh, this is actually one, one fight that I am excited to see on this card. Um, Nate the Train is always fun to watch. But unfortunately here, I'm going to side with Klein to win here. Klein averages 3.32 strikes per minute with a 54% accuracy versus Nate's 7.02 strikes per minute with a 50% accuracy. So Nate definitely has the more volume and output, but the thing that worries me about Nate here is his striking defense. Um, he absorbs 7.67 strikes per minute with a 51% defense. So he really does need to be careful here because I really feel Klein is the better striker. He's more technical. He does have really good leg kicks. Um, he's had a few knockouts by head kicks. So also Klein does average 3.69 takedowns with a 57% accuracy. So if he wants to get this fight to the mat, he I think he can. Also another thing, I just think Nate has a lot of damage in his career and his chin isn't what it used to be. Uh, his last fight, and he got knocked out in like under 60 seconds. So I think if Klein can hit him here with a kick, like a, maybe a head kick or a couple punches, good clean punches, I think he's going to drop. That's where I see this fight going. I think Klein's going to win maybe late first round, early second round. So I'm going to go ahead and say Klein wins here by KO. All right, so the next fight we got here is Julian Marquez versus Jordan Wright. Marquez is 9-2, and two, 31 years old, 6-2 with a 72-inch reach. And Wright is 12-1, 30 years old, 6-2 with a 77-inch reach. So actually, here's another fight that I'm interested to see for however long it lasts, actually. Both of these fighters are interesting characters, to say the least. Uh, but I'm going to side with Marquez here. Marquez averages 4.20 strikes per minute with a 45% accuracy versus Wright's crazy 7.13 strikes per minute with a 60% accuracy. But here's the bad news for Wright, though. He absorbs about the same amount of strikes that he throws which is 7.49 strikes absorbed per minute with a 39% defense. So he is very, very hittable. But his defense is his offense. He just goes all out. He doesn't care. And he'll throw any punch, any kick, any knee, any elbow right in your face from the get-go. But the way I see this fight playing out is Wright is going to go all out in the first round, maybe the first minute or two. He's going to unleash all the strikes that he wants on Marquez. And if he can survive that first early pressure of Wright, I really feel like Marquez is going to take over immediately after that. And then once Marquez gets Wright on his heels, Wright's going to crumble and he's going to protect himself and I think he's going to go down on the ground. But if this fight does get to the mat as well, I think Marquez does have the advantage, which is what I think 
going to happen is Marquez is going to get him knocked down and he's going to go for the submission again. He did that the last two or three fights Marquez did. With my pick here, I'm going to go Marquez by submission. All right, so next fight I'm going to break down here is Menon Farat versus Mayra Bueno Silva. Farat is 7-1, and one, 31 years old. 5'7 with a 66 inch reach. And Silva, 7'1 one and 1, 30 years old. 5'6 with a 66.5 inch reach. So this fight was supposed to happen a couple weeks ago, I think. And I'm glad they kept this fight together because it was going to be an interesting one. I originally picked Farat last time they were supposed to fight. And I'm going to stick with that pick here too. Farat has looked amazing in her last two wins. Um, she averages 8 strikes per minute with a 50% accuracy. Versus Silva's 4.06 strikes per minute with a 57% accuracy. Defense wise, Farat absorbs 1.98 strikes per minute with an 80% defense versus Silva's 4.89 strikes absorbed per, per minute with a 47% defense. So Silva's striking defense isn't the greatest. She's pretty hittable as well. And I think Farat's striking is gonna play a big part in this fight. I think she's gonna pick her apart and find the holes in Silva's defense. If the fight gets the mat, Silva might have the advantage on this one. She doesn't really take down her opponents, but she can get submissions when she's on her back. She's had a couple submissions in her career. I think arm bars. But if this fight does play on its feet, which I think it will, I think it's gonna be in the favor of Farat. So I'm going to pick Farad to win here by decision. All right, guys, this is where the card starts getting amazing. Get ready. So the next bout I'm going to break down here is a clash of the titans. Jim Miller versus Eric Gonzalez. Jim Miller is 32 and 16, 38 years old, 5'8 with a 71 inch reach. And Gonzalez is 14 and 5, 29 years old. 5'11 with a 74 inch reach. So we have Jim the Gatekeeper Miller versus Gonzalez the Newcomer in this Clash of the Titans bout. With my pick here, I'm going to say that Jim Miller is going to defend the UFC gates and win this fight. Although Miller hasn't really had a good run lately, he lost three of his last four, but his grappling is where his bread and butter is. As I said, this is going to be Gonzalez's UFC debut. Um, he does have a good leg kicks and he can put pressure on his opponents, but other than that, he's just a little wild. He's not very technical with his striking. He can take people down if, if need be, but he's not really that good of a wrestler or submission guy. I have no idea why this fight's even going on. I don't think Eric Gonzalez is maybe ready for the UFC yet, but what I think is going to happen is this fight's not going to last too long. I think Miller's going to either pick him apart on the feet or he's going to get him to the ground and get a submission real quick. So I'm sorry for the short uh, prediction here, but so with my pick, I'm going to go with Miller to win here by submission. And here we have it, co-main event time. Get ready. It's Andre Orlovsky versus Carlos Felipe. Orlovsky is 31 and 20, 42 years old. 6'3 with a 77 inch reach. And Felipe is 11 and 1, 26 years old, 6 foot with a 75 inch reach. So if this doesn't scream co made event to you, I don't know what you're watching because this is going to be a banger of a fight. But honestly, this fight, it can, it can go either way. I'm going to pick Orlovsky here. I don't feel really confident picking him, but I really can't look past his experience. He knows what to do in every situation. Yeah, he's 42 years old. But I'm not too impressed with Felipe. Orlovsky is kind of a low volume striker now. Uh, he averages 3.62 strikes per minute with a 44% accuracy versus Felipe's 4.88 strikes per minute with a 46% accuracy. So the stats that do jump out to me are the striking defense numbers. Orlovsky absorbs 2.95 strikes per minute with a 57% defense versus Felipe's 5.62 strikes absorbed per minute with a 50% defense. So right there you do see that Felipe is very hittable. Um, I don't know if that's going to play a big part in this fight because like I said, Orlovsky's kind of low volume. He'll stay his, at, his, at range. He'll throw his jab out here and there. He might do a couple one-two punches and some low kicks, but that's about all he's really good for nowadays. Felipe does like to push the pace a little bit. He'll be in your face. I really think Orlovsky is going to be able to dance around the octagon and just make sure he keeps his distance all the whole fight. With that being said, and all my excitement for this fight, let, let me tell you, I'm going to say Orlovsky's going to win here by a split decision. Oh, hey, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for me. Appreciate it. Okay, everyone. Get ready, main event time. Are you excited? Because I am. We have Norma Dumont versus Aspen Ladd. Dumont is six and one, 31 years old, 
5'7 with a 67 inch reach. And Ladd is 9 in 1, 26 years old, 5'6 with a 66 inch reach. So in this main event, um, I was actually kind of looking forward to seeing Holly home fight again. Uh, it's been a while for her. I know she keeps getting injured, but um, Aspen Ladd is taking over in her place for this one. Um, after her little weigh-in issues in the UFC Vegas 38. So she tried to get down to 135, but I think her official weight was 137 and she looked bad. This time she only needs to get up to 145, so hopefully she can do it this time. Uh, who knows? But with my pick here, I'm going to side with Dumont. Um, honestly, this is more of a fade on Ladd. If this was a three-round fight, I might pick Ladd here. Ladd hasn't fought in almost two years now. And she just had the weigh-in issues at UFC Vegas 38. And I'm a little worried about her lasting all five rounds, even if she can make it to three rounds. But I do think she is the better grappler of the two. Um, and she also has fought the better competition. Ladd averages 5.22 strikes per minute with a 55% accuracy versus Dumont's 4.98 strikes per minute with a 53% accuracy. I do think Dumont is the more technical of the two, and she does also have really good striking defense with 67%, and her takedown defense is 100% as well. I think Dumont can stuff the majority of her takedowns early and keep it on her feet. And if this fight stays on the feet, I think it's gonna be Dumont's all day. So like I said, this is gonna be a pretty close fight. Um, but with my pick, I think it's going to go to the scorecards here, and I think Dumont gets the decision. All right, guys, so there you have it. Those are my picks for UFC Vegas 40, Ladd vs. Dumont. As I said before, I know this isn't the greatest of cards ever, but hey, we're going to have to push through it somehow, so let's just get it out of the way. Leave a comment below with who you think is going to win, and actually, if you want to comment below which fight you think is going to be the worst, let's do that too. And on your way out, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button for me. Also, be on the lookout for my Johnny K. Betts video that I'm going to post later this week week where I break down the bets for UFC Vegas 40 that I make. Hope you guys try to enjoy UFC Vegas 40 and happy fight night.